today was game one of the world championship match between Ding and, and Jan. And what's funny is they played an opening I discussed yesterday. One of the games that I discussed yesterday was a game where Jan played D3. Um, thanks, Mad Scientist 2969. And I said, people used to play Rook E1, but now they also play D3, Knight C3, and Bishop C6. And what's funny is, if you had told me that Jan played one of those moves, it wouldn't have been Bishop takes C6. So I've had black in this position, and I've, I've had white in this position too, actually. I played Rui Lopez once I did this, and I won a stupid game. Um, now, some of you are confused, probably because you watched other recaps by people who aren't good at explaining chess to you, but their ratings are high, or they are high, or they have a nicer suit on than I do. Okay, but I'm actually going to help you because you guys need a lot of help. Okay, now you may be confused, although you were already confused. Now you're just confused more. You're confused. Why did white play bishop a4 and then play bishop take c6 a couple moves later? Why doesn't he just take on c6? Why is he losing a tempo? And the answer is black has played knight f6, which cuts down black's options in the exchange uh, Rui Lopez. So in the exchange Rui Lopez, which would be bishop takes, pawn takes, and then either d4 or castles. We'll look at castles. Um, strong players don't play knight f6 here. Strong players either play knight e7 to go to g6, or they play f6, or they play bishop g4, or they play queen d6. Okay, and I don't know what's the most popular now. F6 used to be by far the most popular. This was a really cool line like 30 years ago because nobody understood it. It was too complicated. And I don't know if they even play this line anymore. But anyway, the point is, if you play knight F6, your pawn on E5 is going to be hanging and the bishop on D6 is very passive and you can't play F6. So you, you got to do something. So that's why they de they delay bishop takes until after knight f6 and bishop e7. So now if I want to play f6, I can't. If I want to play bishop d6, I'm still losing a tempo. So in this position, everybody plays d3. That's every game ever played by everybody ever. And here Jan played rook e1. And if you follow Twitter like Karen does, although she follows poker Twitter, but still she follows Magnus because he's poker Twitter. Magnus said, "Is that? did we look at that move? He was talking with um, Peter Heinde Nielsen on Twitter. They were talking to each other where you could see it. And he's like, did we look at that move in our preparations? And Nielsen's like, 2016 we didn't, but maybe like in 2000, some other match we did because nobody plays rookie one. Now, one of the ideas here is whether white's going to play d4 or not. And if you assume white's not going to play d4, which I would assume, <clears throat> then white's going to play d3. He'll put his knight on c4. He'll play c3 at some point, or he'll play b3, bishop b2. And perhaps if he's lucky, he'll play f4. Now, if you play d4 early, you could argue that since black has the two bishops and white doesn't, d4 opens the center, that helps the bishops. So rookie one sort of insinuates you're not going to play for f4, you're going to play for d4, which is what happened. And after rookie one, Ding in the press conference said, I forgot my analysis, I'm depressed, I didn't prepare for the game, and I, I sat in my room crying all day etc. Mainly etc. I saw, can I just jump in here for a yes. second? Yes. Because I saw, when I saw snippets of the game, and, but that, um, but I haven't seen the game all the way through. So just, just a little tid, tidbit that they were saying, and I can't remember now which channel it was on, mm -hmm. but that the bishop takes um, 
on C6 move was mm-hmm. something. Gary did that same move in the 2021 candidates. Mm-hmm. That move's been played many times. Yeah. It's just not, it's like the against, third most common against move. Against Ding, though. Yeah. Against oh, against Ding. Yeah. Okay. Now, according to either Jan Gustafsson or Peter High Nielsen, I'm being corrected here, it was Gustafsson, mm. the, the, there's some chessable course written by one of them where Bishop G4, I guess it's Gustafsson, and he gives this complicated line where black sacks a piece and so forth. That's right. Gary did and, win. And Bishop G4 is, is the engine approved move, but everything's about equal, so it's okay. Another move you could make is queen to D7. A D6. That's almost seven, six, seven. I'm all sixes and sevens today. Anyway, he played another move, which you'll often find black playing in these structures where it's uh, Berlin or whites play D3 early. He played knight D7, and that defends the pawn. This pawn's going to go to F6, and this knight's going to go to E6, and then black's going to push his pawns, and everybody's happy. Now... What I said is actually true and not a joke. So therefore, Jan didn't want that to happen. Whether it's Jan Gustafsson or Jan Nipomnishi, we don't know. But just Jan didn't want it to happen. So this position, as I insinuated when White played rookie one, wants to play D4. So he played D4. And... This is in, in Jan's preparation for this game because Ding almost always plays the real Lopez with black if you allow it. And Jan isn't necessarily playing bishop takes c6. I'm not sure if he's ever played it. And so he would have secret illegal preparation and Ding was probably preparing for other stuff. Or to paraphrase Ding, I didn't prepare. So I don't know. Frankly, crazy. Are they allowed to have a board in the coffee rooms? What? What's a coffee room and what's a board? Also, where's my 77 subs? Hungry. Okay, so he takes on d4. Queen takes d4, threatening g7. And queen takes d4. Is an, the idea is we're controlling e5. So if I want to play e5, I'm going to play e5. You're not going to blockade there. Because I got three guys defending e5. Okay, so I want my knight on f3 so you can never play knight e5 or bishop f6 and knight e5 or f6 and knight e5 because I got e5 under control. Obviously, I have a threat here. So he castled. Makes sense. Bishop f4. Now, the point of bishop f4 is interesting. The queen's going to get attacked. Will it be attacked by the pawn or the bishop? I don't know. And by I don't know, it's going to get attacked by the pawn. I'm just kidding. When it gets attacked, where does it go? Okay, now in preparation for the game, uh, they got Guns N' Roses to play music while they were preparing. And it turned out in this very specific position, Axl Rose said, where do we go? Where do we go now? Where do we go? And he's like, wait a minute, where does my queen go? So he got paid extra for this analysis. And that's the kind of analysis you don't hear from like Geary and Fabi, terrible. Anand, they're not going to tell you Gotham chess. You're not going to hear about Axel Rose hooking them up. Okay, so he played Bishop F4, and you might say, what does that have to do with his queen retreating? And it actually happens next move, so your question's answered quickly. And remember I said White had to play E5, and you were like, White does have to play E5. What are you talking about? What, what is this? Okay, if I play bishop f6, guess what move you're going to play? Oh, snap! You're going to play e5. Otherwise, you know, Ish don't think so. Okay, so he played the move c5, or he played knight c5. He wants to trade queens. And in this position, if I take on d8, you have to play the suboptimal bishop takes d8 so you can defend your pawn. However... This doesn't last very long. That's what she said. The knight goes to e6, attacking the bishop and defending the pawn. Then the bishop can go to greener pastures. That's why I made the board green today. If the game was decisive, I would have made the board red for, you know, bloody game. Okay. 
So he played queen e3. He likes this queen here. He says, I'm going to play knight c3, rook d1, and your queen is stupid. And now that he played queen e3, he would much rather put his queen there with the bishop on f4 rather than the bishop on c1, blocking his bishop. Frankly, passive. Okay, Ding played bishop g4. The engine prefers knight e6, but bishop g4 develops a piece. That's pretty good. Knight to d4. He wants to play knife f5 because, you know, he likes me. So, And he played queen d7. You can't play knife f5. I defended that. Knight c3. Now, one of the good things about the bishop on g4 is that it stops immediate rook d1. If white plays rook d1 without any problem, black would be like, why is my queen on d7? However, if white wants to play rook d1, what move would he have to play first to preface that so he could do it? Um, let's see. Also, never do it. F3. Right. So he's like, if you play F3, weakening your king, then you can play rook d1, and then he thinks that's a weakness. Now, Ding didn't want to win the first game because Ding was depressed. So he met F3 with an equally unlikely move. Okay, so rook d8, knife f5. And here, Anand, and I didn't see this on video, I saw it on Twitter. Anand said, uh, excuse me, and I assume he was using the engine, but maybe Anand is just good at chess. I'm going to assume the engine because Anand's sort of old. The engine says you should play h3, attacking the bishop, ignoring the knight. Okay, that knight's like me, Karen's ignoring it. Oh, snap. Now watch this, Karen. If he takes the knight, oh, give me the knight. I'm not ignoring you. And you think if he takes the knight, white will take the bishop and everybody's happy. But you will know white is the lord mm -hmm. when he plays the most amazing move ever here, winning the game. White's winning in one move. When I say winning, it's like 1.6. Technically winning. Yeah, I don't know. Are you sitting down? Mm -hmm. Good thing she's sitting down. Notice how that attacks the queen. The yeah. queen's not defended. If you take my queen, because your queen's hanging, then I say, excuse me, I take this with check. Then I take this. Material's equal, because it is, mm -hmm. but your knight's hanging and your bishop's hanging. Ah. Truth hurts. So to be losing a little less, you have to play bishop f6, defending your queen. Then I take it. You take with the queen. Actually, taking with the queen is bad because of bishop g5. Then I take the rook, and you still have two pieces hanging. Okay. You have to take with the pawn. This is the engine playing itself. Now queen g3, and it's obvious white's better here because black's position looks ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the engine says this is about plus two. Okay, now in this position, after h3, the engine wants to play a crazy move, rook fe8. Then if you take the bishop, then I take the knight, and knight d5 doesn't attack my bishop because the rook's defending it. So the engine wants to play rook fe8 after h3, and it says white's slightly better. Okay, so he played knife f5, because who wouldn't play knife f5? Knife f5. Okay, now he could take the knight, um, which he didn't do. Now, he can't win a pawn, because the bishop hangs, the bishop hangs, and the knight hangs. So then white wins a piece. But he could take the knight and then not take on f5. The engine says that's fine. He played knight e6 instead, which is also good. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop g3. So we have, mm, looks like an equal position. The players have the same pieces, the same pawns, and opposite bishops. And Black's Knight's really good on e6. The difference is white has a king side majority and Black's queen side majority 
doesn't look very good like it's going to create a pass pawn ever or control the center. Whereas white can play f4, f5, rawr. Okay, and then black doing that seems unlikely. So in this position, white certainly has an advantage. How much of an advantage, super GMs could argue. And they would. They would say, oh yeah, white's great for white. Yeah, white's better, but not that much. That's what they would argue about. Okay, now the engine wants to play f5, which is a very committal move. That's the engine move. And instead, Ding played bishop to h5, setting up um, a conundrum for me as a chess annotator and a commentator. Because both players played moves I tell you never to play. Terrible. White, who wants to play rook d1 at some point in his life, played the move f3. Notice f3 weakens the dark squares, but white has a dark square bishop and black doesn't. So it's more palatable for that reason. And black did the same. He played f6. That sort of tells you the result of the game. f3, f6. Obviously, the game ended in a draw. Nobody's going to win playing those moves. And the pawn goes to f6, so the bishop has a nice square here on f7. We're protecting the center on e5 a little bit, etc. But still, white has this majority on the king's side, and black's majority is not so good. Also, I like white's bishop. It's putting pressure on a pawn, and this bishop's like trapped on the side of the board. Okay, he played h3. It's the world championship, so they got to play some boring moves so you sort of know what you're watching. Right? If they were like e5 and knight d5 and queen b4, that would be like the U.S. Junior Championship. That wouldn't be a world championship. World championships like f3, h3, king h1, king h2, draw agreed. That's the world championship. If you watched my games earlier in the stream, you'll see how it's not the world championship. If you want to see games that aren't the world championship, you could always watch Gotham Chess's stream also. Okay, so H6. So what's that? I was just talking to chat. Oh, I mean, I was roasting him all day. F3. Did you? I don't know if you weren't here when I was mentioning this. On Twitter? Oh, I did, maybe you were here. On yeah. Twitter, Gotham Chess was getting roasted by Geary for like the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. And he roasted him today. And Gotham Chess said, like, would you stop? And then Geary said, I thought we were we were buds. Oh. And then he complained a lot. Then on his stream today, people <laughs> told me he complained a lot about Geary and talked about it a lot. Really? So what happened was over the last two or three weeks, Gotham Chess on Twitter has been saying the World Championship's coming up and nobody knows about it because, you know, Fide's not doing I a good job. That. And then Geary was roasting him over those comments for like forever. And, and then Gotham Chess didn't like that. I mean, if you're going to get roasted by somebody, who do you want to get roasted by? Me? I don't think so. Geary. Now, that's a good roaster. Well, okay. I'll have to go back and look at it and see if he's yeah. justified. Yeah, you shouldn't complain that Geary is roasting you. Geary roasts Magnus every day. Yeah, that's, he, uh, hang on a second. So G Gotham said on Perpetual Chess Podcast that all the top GMs pick on him, and he was kind of sad. Yeah. Really? Well, here's what I would say, and then we can move it along with the commentary. I mean, he, he likes to dish out a lot of shit. <laughs> so if you're going to be a roaster and somebody that has his persona, um, then, you know, probably got to take some back. But I'm going to go look at it and see. What I mean, if I was Gotham Chess and I was getting roasted by Carlson and Geary and Nakamura, that'd be great. I never get roasted by those guys. They don't think enough of me to roast me. <laughs> now I'm sad. Okay. <laughs> so remember what I told you about the world championship? F3, F6, H3, H6. Okay. King H2, Bishop F7. This is the boring part of the game. Rook AD1, B6. Finally, he's going to get his pawn majority on the queen side going. A3, stopping queen b4, which wasn't relevant. A5, stopping b4, which wasn't going to happen. Okay, knight e2. He's doing something. And the best way to draw according to Ding is to trade all the, the rooks off, trade all the pieces off. And they trade all the pieces Okay, off. I have a question. I have an answer. 
and it is kind of a basic question too. I'm gonna ask it anyway, because you keep talking about how the pawn majority on the queen side for black is no good. I yeah, because it's, it's a double doubled. pawn. Right. And if it was a king and pawn endgame, white would be winning because you can't create a pass pawn. That, okay, here. so but I'm I not, I'm not real good with pawn structures, so I assumed it'd be harder because they're double. But mm -hmm. he's, he's pushing them like he's got right. That's going that on. explains what he's doing. He's got a pawn majority. So he's yeah. pushing it. He's trying to get where, it, where it's reasonable. It, I thought you said his palm majority was shit. So he's pushing it anyway. Right. He's trying to make it not shit. Well, right. how does he make it not shit? Well, he keeps trade pushing. Trade one off? No, that would be good if he could trade off one of his doubled pawns. Right. But White would never allow that. But I'm wondering that my question is, which is a basic one, what mm -hmm. is the strategy since you've already said it's shit if he, over there? If he gains space, then eventually the extra pawn will be useful. If he can gain space by pushing all his pawns. Okay. I said if. Because you know, he can attack these pieces down here on the default. Yeah, and eventually, too. if he can push all of his pawns, yeah. you know, might get somewhere. Okay. Maybe. Also, his pawn was hanging here on c7. Now it's not. That's true. That explains knight takes d8. If you play queen takes d8, mm -hmm. then I trade queens, and bishop c7 is a fork. Yeah. Then you're not going to like your pawns very much. Okay. Okay, so he took with the knight. Oh, give me the knight. And now White played an excellent move. Very good move for you guys at home. For a super GM, it's easy. But for the gawking rabble, you guys are sitting around going, ah, ah, ah. And I'm like, no, that's not the right move. And it turned out you were gawking the right move, but I didn't understand you. Man, this game is going to the birds. Okay, so he played excellent move. Queen F4. He's going to penetrate and infiltrate. He's going to do both. And then he's going to attack these pawns from behind. And in chess, we call that penetrating from behind. That's, that's what it's called. So when these things happen, when your opponent wants to penetrate from behind, what do you do? You use prophylaxis. I mean, he can force a queen trade, can he? If he goes back there. Who? Like if you said Queen B A mm -hmm. was the target. Yeah. I need to go Queen B seven. Uh -oh. oh, oh, there you go. Hanging. Oh, give me the knight. Oh, I forgot that was hanging. Highbrow commentary is correct. Yeah. So what does he have to make? Again, you don't see this kind of analysis with the other guys. I don't know what they're talking about even. Okay. So so here we come. By the way, I have to tell you a funny story about prophylaxis. She got queen b7. With, Kaidanov was talking to a woman who like really didn't know how to play chess. And when he said prophylaxis, she would laugh. And he was like, why, why is that funny? Then she told him what it was in the non-chess term. And he says, oh, I didn't know that. It was called that. So then he thought it was funny too. Okay, also, you don't know what it's called, so you can look it up. By the way, good luck spelling prophylaxis. Good, good luck. <laughs> It's the only thing worse than prophylaxis is amateur laxis. Will we ever have a, a world where people are not amused by dicks, anuses, condoms? That's why they changed the name of the planet Uranus to Erectum. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Will there ever be a, wor a world such as where it's just remember? Mundane? Remember in Rick and Morty? When uh, <laughs> Werner Herzog says they just love talking about their dicks. It doesn't matter if they say they're large or they're small. Thanks for 1243. I assume that's 10 euros. Thanks, Blind Puffin. I can tell you all the poker world ever wants to talk about is who has the biggest dick. Literally. They talk about that's, weight. That's even all the women talk about. There's some app to measure your dick size. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> well, I mean, don't they have something else to think about? <laughs> Proceed. What? I've never <laughs> seen such indolence. Yeah, Werner Herzog's voice does make it funny. Yeah. I only know him from the uh, the narrator of that bear movie, Grizzly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So Werner Herzog made a movie called Werner Herzog Eats His Hat. Because yeah. he bet somebody he'd just have something happen, and it did. So okay. he just had. But Werner Herzog, surprisingly, was in Rick and Morty, and more surprisingly, was in the Boondocks. 
a, a cartoon you wouldn't expect Werner Herzog Grizzly to be Grizzly Man, in. Grizzly Man, yes. So yeah. I knew I knew he didn't quite have it stuck fish. Grizzly Man did good until the bear killed him. Otherwise, he was doing fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Marco, I am a Southerner. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I didn't mean, we didn't mean to get that. that Stomp grass. him in the nuts. Stomp him in the nuts. <laughs> A Gary, the Wrath of God was what he was trying to write, but he wrote something else. He was a producer on Grizzly Man, maybe, too. Mm -hmm. I think that was the situation there. I can't even remember now. He was in it, too. On Boondocks, when Obama ran for president, they were talking to some, like, rapper. And they were like, what do you think about Obama? Werner Herzog's doing the commentary. What do you think about the black man running for president? And the guy's like, what are you talking about? Because he never heard of Obama, the, oh, the rapper. Okay. Uh, then the next day, he was like on TV saying, I told Obama to run, and Obama's my homie, and that's why he's running, and it's time for a black man to be president. And this was based on a true story. Mm -hmm. This actually happened in real life. They asked a rapper about Obama. He said, I never heard of him. Then later, he was like, me and Obama are like that. This actually happened. Uh, that, that was why they did it on the Boondocks. <laughs> Although Werner Herzog wasn't the reporter in real life. Okay, All right, let's so here going. comes, so look, look uh, uh, So you said prophylaxis, uh, so what, Queen B7? Okay, or so else? he played B5, oh, now the pawns, he, he puts the pawns on the white squares, the queen and bishop can't take them. I see now. Okay, so queen here doesn't threaten the pawn, although I must admit it is threatening bishop C7, god damn. Me always thinking of the passive move. So look at bishop C7, <laughs> not only does it win a knight, Right? Yeah. It also attacks the pawn. <gasps> yeah. Okay. So Ding played King H7, breaking the pin. Now in this position, White has a couple of ways to win a pawn. And Jan chose not to. And supposedly this is one of the turning points of the game. So if I play Bishop C7, attacking your knight, mm -hmm. you'll play Knight E6 or lose your knight. Mm -hmm. And then I could take this. Right. Okay. Or you could do what Jan did. So that's one way to win a pawn. Okay, the, that's the, the engine prefers this way. He also could win a pawn by forking. So Ding did one of my tricks. He gave his opponent so many good moves, he couldn't figure out which one to make. That's what I do. I play so bad. My pawn's like, this wins, this wins. Okay, so you see how he's forking here? Mm -hmm. Now he made a bad decision. In this position... If he takes this pawn, which is playable, then black obviously gets counterplay. Queen d2 attacking everything. But he could play queen c7. Okay, queen takes his forced. Bishop takes. And then I'm attacking this and this. If you don't want to lose one of those, you'll play knight to b7. And then your knight's no good. Mm -hmm. And so this position is a really nice endgame for white because this is the stupidest knight ever. So this indicates bishop d6 wasn't the best move. Um, and if you play bishop takes c5, which also wins a pawn, then I play queen d2. And the engine still prefers white here, but well, how did that queen get so active? That never happened in other variations. So he didn't want that queen to get active, and he wanted to maintain his advantages. So he pre-defended his knight. Before black played bishop c4, or queen d2, he played knight g3. Now he could take the pawn, and black has less counterplay because the knight's safe. Also, not only is my knight safe and my king safe, the knight could go to f5 later. Okay, but black didn't lose a pawn, so he played knight e6, defending his pawn. And now the game continued without white being a pawn up. And after f4, which is a very committal move, the engine says white lost his advantage. And you can see the knight wants to go to d4 because I said so. That's mm -hmm. a nice square. So the engine wants him to play c3. So wait, no, tell me about f4 again. What's going on? After f4, the engine doesn't like that move and says white's lost his advantage because now he could play the move knight d4, which he didn't do. He played a move that's okay also. This move weakens the e-pawn, weakens the white king. It's The center's not as solid anymore. It sort of ruins the pawn structure. I don't understand. Well, e4 is not as protected. I get that. I don't and, understand and it, what it has to do with going to knight d4. Well, it wants white to play c3, then you can't go knight d4. 
I'm saying you said F4 allowed him to go to knight D4. Right, and so he should play C3 not allowing it. That's my point. He should stop knight D4. But for, forget... Oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. He just should have delayed on that move. Yeah, and, and, and now done a prophylactic Black move. played another good move, H5, trying to play H4, which in the end he didn't do. Mm -hmm. Then C3, and now the engine wants to play H4 and says it's equal. But he played C4, which is also good. This way he's not going to lose any of his pawns. So it seems hard for white to win if black doesn't lose any pawns. Black's very passive. Okay, so he played h4, stopping black from playing h4. And now he tried to trade queens like you. And he said, I don't want to trade queens. What do you mean, like me? You were trying to trade queens before. I wasn't recommending that. No. I was... Now he played knight f5, Brains threatening mate. Queens. Then he's traded queens. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no trading queens. And he's like, trading queens. And eventually he's like, all right, fine. Now it's hard to win because... You know, my king's not. My king can just walk up to the center. Your 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 four to three majority is going to be blocked by my three pieces, and the b pawn is weak. So eventually, my knight might be able to get somewhere and attack your b pawn. Mm -hmm. So white has a symbolic advantage here, but not winning anymore. Here comes the knight, working on his knight moves. Yeah, you can't stop knight d3, knight takes. So he just puts his king and bishop here to stop e6. And I'm going to go here regardless and irrespective. And nowadays, irregardless. So he gets this, he trades his e-pawn for the c-pawn. And in this position, if you carelessly take this pawn... That was first played in the game O versus snap. Winning the bishop. Right. There wasn't any way to save that b-pawn, like if you pushed it back when the knight was on d4, that, did, that wouldn't work. Oh, you want to play b3 here? I'm just asking, yeah. You could play b3 here, yeah. To try to save Oh, no! There's, uh, a, there's a fork I didn't see. <laughs> Luckily, the engine's here. So that's... <laughs> So that's why that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, knight d3 threatens this and this. Yeah. I but see. this is more important. Yeah. Okay. So bishop d7. Again, this pawn's mm -hmm. not running away. Yeah, now the pawn structure has changed into like white having nothing. Mm -hmm. And they agree to a draw here. The engine says all zeros, every move's all zeros. There's no, no way to try to win for either side. Yeah. Now, the other commentators and people analyzing the game, they do a bad job. And by I mean all of them, what I mean is all of them. That's what I mean. Okay, you want, you want the good analysis, you come here. Okay, you want that crap, you watch other people. Anand, Anand is pretty what, good. No, no, here's what other people do, including Anand. And I didn't see Anand, but I just assumed that he did it. Is... They say white had good winning chances. White may be winning. Jan's going to be really upset he didn't win that game. You know, terrible. Black's play in the opening and middle game wasn't very good. He was getting outplayed, et cetera, et cetera. Very negative. Okay. And thanks, Shark Sandwich. But in a world championship match, when both players are about 2,800 and any move can cost you the game, it's very nerve wracking. And the games take five hours. And you can't make one little mistake. And you have to realize Ding is defending at the highest level from this worst position. And eventually gets to a position that's clearly drawn. So it's true. Jan was better. Jan was much better. Maybe if two engines were playing, he would win. Maybe. But Ding defended well. And as per usual, Jan in Ding's time trouble played a little too quickly probably. He likes to put the pressure on by playing faster than his opponent, and sometimes that backfires. Sometimes it doesn't backfire, and Ding has 30 seconds left, and Jan has 40 minutes, and Ding's like, no, I'm depressed, and so forth. Isn't Ding supposed to be isn't he a slow player, though, in general? I think so, yeah. And Jan's a fast player. Right. But usually in a world championship match, the grandmasters assembled and their engines and all the gawking rabble 
are just very negative about the player's play. That's no good. That's no good. Terrible, horrible move. He should have won. And that's that's not what chess is. Chess isn't two supercomputers playing each other. That's two supercomputers playing each other. It's easy to analyze and be critical when you have 20 other grandmasters helping you. You can take moves back when you're wrong and the engine tells you the right moves. So that was a very high level game. White got an advantage as white does in chess sometimes. And black defended really well when he was in trouble and white didn't press appropriately in a couple positions and had some difficult decisions to make and couldn't figure it out. And Ding drew the game. Very good game. Mm -hmm. And it was good. One side was pressing to win. One side was defending. And 50-50. White could have won that game too. He just didn't. And yeah. now we're going to see Ding press when he's white, etc. What we don't want to see is the Nepo implosion from his Magnus match where he loses like four games out of six. And he's blundering and playing fast and bad. Which sometimes he does. This game he was pressing and playing well. Got him in the opening, etc. And then when he was in the break room, they're recording him and putting it on the internet. That's they shouldn't do that. 